been around for about 100 years, and the agreement was that whoever took over this particular building, that it stay a theater. The original owners, Margie and Earl Jenkinson, when they left that to my father, their wishes were for it to always remain a movie theater. Welcome to the ISIS. I think it's a place for families to connect. There's a lot of places specifically catered to adults and not so much to children or family events particularly. So I think outings like this is really crucial to being able to bring families together in this community. As far as uh, why it was named the Isis, I'm not sure. I'm sure it had to do with the princess, the goddess, the Isis. You know, I used to have to push a button to open the curtain push a button to lower the lights, you know, and it was all manual, everything I had to do. Now they push one button, the movie starts, the curtains open, the lights dim. So once the movie starts, the projectionist walks away, where I used to have to sit up there through the whole movie, changing back and forth from reel to reel until the movie was over. For the ISIS theater, he talked about having film reels. Now everything's digital, but they used to have to show everything on actual reels. So again, you would load up those films. You'd put two reels on, one on each side. You'd start the movie, open the curtains, all that stuff, the movie would be gone. Then when it's getting real close to the end of that reel, I don't know if you've seen in the old Westerns and stuff, you'll see what's called a cue mark. And they are up in the upper corners of the screen. It was a round circle. And so I would start the other machine, it'd be getting going down through the 10, 9, 8, 7. I'd see those cue marks and I'd switch over and turn the number one off. Then I would rewind that reel, put on number three and just keep going back and forth until the movie was over. And so when my dad decided to retire, he worked out a deal with a friend of his, Brad Cravoy, and some other business partners to make sure that when it sold, it remained a movie theater. And so it did, it turned from a single theater. It was also the largest theater on the Western Slope at 400 seats. Most theaters nowadays have anywhere from 150 to 250 seats. So it was a very large theater, but the new owners said, yes, they were gonna keep it a theater and they turned it into five movie theaters. Then over some time, over the last 10, 15 years, movies weren't doing that great. So they got rid of a few of the screens and turn that into a uh, rental space. I'm just very happy to be able to work with the, the Film Fest folks. You know, I know their dedication in keeping this a movie theater is very important to my father, Dominic. My dad turns 90 years old here in just a few months. And I run the ISIS Theater for 33 years. And it was a joy to do. I love that place. And his memory's going pretty hard, but. He still sees a lot of things that remind him of that. He did it for a long time, you know? And so I'm very proud that the Film Fest group is still trying to keep this as a movie theater. Alan and her best friend came to see me and they wanted to go ahead and have a film festival at the ISIS Theater. So I said, you better believe we'll do it. We put together a film program in 1979, not having any idea if anyone would attend. And the four of us stood there with our mouths wide open when people were lining up around the block. It was over at Pepke and there were lines clear out to uh, Gillespie Street. We could not get over it. We were just blown away. It was wonderful. The theater was just jam packed just keep supporting this place. If you want to continue seeing it in your community, I think it brings a lot of value. And I think this is one very different um, theater in contrast to many across the US. We actually host and do a lot of partnerships specifically with Aspen Film. And I think that's a really crucial part of our success and being able to get others involved that traditionally wouldn't want to come to a theater.